Today I don't have what you would call a regular type of sermon, but I do have a word that I would like to share with you guys this morning, and hopefully um, you will be edified, you will become more knowledgeable as it relates to this topic, and God will get the glory. Come on now. So, I'm going to be behind this thing today since I have this. Uh, this deal. So, how y'all feeling this morning? Good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, how long ago did we start that uh, apostolic teaching uh, when we began to discuss about um, three phases of the apostle? Governing. Governing. Yeah. Guarding. Yeah. And guiding. Uh, guarding. Governing. Guiding. How long ago did we start that? Are you sure? It probably was before that time, huh? That was like at the end of July. Somewhere around there. Three, three, three stages of any apostle or apostolic ministry, and we begin to go intricately into what it means to. Uh, was that guard at first? Yeah, guard. Guard. We we talked about guard and I like guarding your heart and all of that, right? Governor. And Governor. we're still in the governing part, correct? Mm -hmm. um, we went on in the governing, and we begin to talk about the grace message. Um, there's this illicit grace message that have been, or rather, have not been confronted in just because they are big names and televisions. Most people gravitate towards it because they have built the name to be trusted. And so that's understandable. Um, but I refute, as a man of God, some of the things that some of these people be saying because uh, the ultra grace message is not the truth. It is another gospel. Now, I was telling my wife yesterday that um, one of the persons that I heard say something one time about the grace message, I, I was reading some of their posts, and they were actually on point as it relates to some of the grace messages. So I, I'm going to go back and give this person another here, you know, listen in, you know, because maybe that day they just was off on that one thing. You know, sometimes when you're journeying, you make a few mistakes. So that's understandable. I've made mistakes, you know, as, as I've taught some things. So. You know, we, but we do want to be careful not to put a person in a position or teach a person that they can do whatever they want to do and still go to heaven. The Bible talks about the righteous scarcely making it. We, we don't want to attest to a gospel that is not true, right? And so we begin to talk about governing, governing. We went through Romans, the first chapter when it begins to discuss uh, about our consciousness, how their conscious knows that there is a God, but they refute to accept him as God. We begin to talk about uh, the second chapter that deals with uh, the law. And uh, we begin to talk about the law versus grace. We begin to discuss that and we begin to give details as it relates to when it first began what it was all about, how we became free, what are we in operation in now, right? We begin to talk about that. We begin to discuss some time ago how the law was just the babysitter, you know, waiting for uh, the real person, the real parent, grace to come and set us free from this law. You got it? We begin to discuss all of that. Uh, we begin to show scriptures for that as well. But I still want to journey a little bit more in this grace message uh, I don't think that this grace message, I, I think we were in a season where, where, where God is really amplifying this message really strong. I don't know why he's doing it uh, to be fully truthful. I don't know why fully why he's doing it, uh, but I have some ideas as to uh, why, such as uh, people are going to hell. Um, the Bible talks about um, when... Some make it to the door, 
they would say, well, Lord, didn't I do this in your name? Didn't I do that in your name? It was a get away from me. You work of what? Iniquity. Now, the ultra grace message teaches us that you can operate in iniquity and still what? Make it. All you got to do is just accept Jesus. That's just simply not true. Huh? On the letter. Yeah, you can. Simply not true, right? Uh, we, we also begin to debunk a few other myths that they have, such as once saved, always saved. If that was the case, then Judas would have been saved. We already know that, you know. Judas would have made it on. Why he didn't make it in? Why Jezebel? Why Je That's another thing. Why Jezebel didn't make it in? The Bible says that I gave her time to repent. I gave her time to repent. This is in Revelations. It said, I gave that Jezebel some time to repent. And yet she still didn't repent. She carried or drank in the blood of the prophets. Huh? It's dripping. In other words, she is inflicted with iniquity. She is just so confound with iniquity. And God said, I would turn those type of people over to a what? Oh, Reprobated mind. mind. So to teach a person that his grace, once saved, always saved, is a false gospel. Right? So I just want to, we want to just look a little bit more at this picture of what grace is. We, we want to give you the nays, but we also want to give the haze because there's a lot that comes with it, right? We also learned that there was freedom in grace. We gave you scriptures about that as well. So today, it's just going to be uh, a little, I don't know, just throw a few scriptures around today, you know, get edified, we go home. Can we do that? We can? Well, one of the first things that I want to share with you today here at Crossroads Ministry, for our first verse of scripture would be Luke, the seventh chapter, the 40th verse. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, I'm telling you, I feel such an anointing in this hour, and I believe that that word that 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 came upon us what was that in june or july june i believe it was when was the anniversary july the july the 27 no. 27 26 no well i'm telling you if y'all want me i can turn that down if y'all want to well, i'm telling you i feel such a strong restoration in this hour and I believe there's an anointing on this house, an anointing on us as vessels to do what we have been called to do. I feel a strong restoration in the spirit. I feel as though that God has restored us to a degree where he is ready to send us out again to journey to do what we were initially called to do. I feel such a strength in the Holy Ghost. Um, and I, I feel such a war as well for... Uh, Proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. I feel such a war in the spirit, so much so that my, my daily thoughts are about Jesus Christ, him crucified, and that should always be. But it's now coming with a stronger, stronger, stronger conviction. To I want to tell the whole world about Jesus. I feel a renewal in the spirit. And that's what I believe that God is about to get ready to do with everyone in this house. If you have not been feeling renewed, if you have not felt that fever, if you have not felt that fire, I believe that God is about to toast you. You're about to get roasted. There is a flame that's about to start inside of your spirit, man. God is getting ready to have you to go into overflow because he's restoring you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a restoration. Somebody say restoration. There is a restoration. Say it again. There is restoration. Yes. Lift up your hand and say, There is restoration, Lord. There is restoration, Lord. Yeah. We're in an hour of restoration. Luke, the 20th chapter, the 40th verse, say, In the child grew and became strong in spirit. Somebody say, Strong. Spirit. Filled with wisdom in. What's that word? Come on with me. Y'all, I'm going to turn off this mic if y'all ain't with me. Filled with wisdom and the grace. Now, this is the Amplified. So, you know, 
it's going to be a little bit different from what you're reading, okay? But what I want you to underline is grace, spirit, strong, all right? Favor and spiritual blessing of God was upon him. God's grace... Luke the 20th chapter? That's what I said, huh? What I said? Oh, I'm sorry. Luke 2 and 40. I'm so sorry. Well, how come the man of God is there? No, no, no. just went there. No, no. I said Luke the second chapter. Oh, you did? Yes. No, the first time. And then you just said. All right. Y'all sorry. Don't worry about it. I I forgive you. All right, let me say it again. And the child grew and became strong in spirit. Somebody say spirit. spirit. I want everybody to open up your eyes. I want you to look up. Look up. Look up. Look around. I want you to know that God is watching every element. He is watching everything that you're doing right now. He is watching what you said last night. I know what you did last summer. God is on time. He is watching us and he is redeeming the time. Just, just, just keep that in mind as you go about your days. Somebody say he's always watching. He's always watching. My God, my God, I feel such an anointing. In the grace, let me, let me, let's read it. Luke, the second chapter, 40 of verse, and the child grew and became strong in spirit. Filled with what? Wisdom. Filled with wisdom. And what? The grace. Favor and spiritual, spiritual blessing, blessing of God, God was what? Upon On the grace. God give us grace that's intended for us to grow. Amen. Grace is intended for us to grow. Write that down. Number one, to grow in strength. Spirit, number three, wisdom. God has never intended to allow his grace for us to do what we want to do. It was always given to us or it was released from heaven to strengthen us. That's what grace, somebody said, grace is strengthening me. Grace Come on, say it like you mean it from your belly. Grace is strengthening me. Grace is strength. Hallelujah. Acts 7, chapter 10, verse. And he saved Joseph from all his troubles. God made Joseph wise. He helped him to become the friend of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. So Pharaoh made Joseph ruler over Egypt and his whole palace. The Greek word for grace, it means charis. It's equivalent to the Hebrew word hesed, meaning, watch this, loving. Kindness. These are key words that you want to remember. Grace. Loving. Kindness. Kindness. It describes God's character. You cannot say God without grace. Just like you can't say God or you can't say love without God. Grace is a part of his what? Character. character. Right? It was so much so, grace will cause you to arise. It will cause you to, to become strong in spirit and in wisdom. It was the grace of God, watch this, that was with Joseph when he was going through initially all of his issues. It was, it was the grace of God that was with Joseph when he was accused wrongly. It was the grace of God who was with Joseph when he was down in the dungeon. No family around. People accusing him. He's down on his luck seemingly. My God, my God. But God, my God, that's why we got to stop looking at issues as if it's a problem. No, 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 no. That's not a problem. God is using that thing to test you. God is using that thing to cause you to grow. There are, you can go into the gym and you can look at the weight bar, but it's not until we begin to lift up the weights till we begin to gain the muscles and momentum as we continue, right, to discipline ourselves. So issues and troubles that come in our lives are here to discipline us, it's here to strengthen us, it's here to make us stronger, it's here to bring out the gifting and the 
calling that God has originally made inside of us. Somebody say amen. Be to God. Ha! It's here to strengthen us. My God. Tell what the people say in the world. How they say it. But here's the thing, because, you know, we got this false grace thing. <laughs> you know, they, they really believe that this grace is like a passport to sin. You know, just hold on. Pull, pull out the grace call. Here go the grace. He said, pull out the grace call. Bloop. Get caught in sex and bloop, put out the grace. <laughs> huh? You know, no, no, seriously, seriously. Seriously, no sit down. You got a pastor that, that just got caught passing AIDS to the congregation. You know, and some people just, you know, they got these big congregations that are idolizing and they, they are committing adultery. And it's, they're growing. It's crazy. Brother V, they, it's growing. Bro, they tripping. They got lesbians in the pulpit. No, they got First gentlemen in the pulpit. First gentlemen. Yeah, first gentlemen, and they are growing, and people are flocking to them. I need you to have your eyes open. I need you to have your hearts ready because this is a battle that we are up against. Think about it. The Bible says a little leaven leavens the entire lump. And just because something sounds good doesn't mean it is good. Pay attention. We're in the, you look at the times that we're in. Come on, children of Israel. Open up your eyes and see. God is watching. Woo! I feel a restoration in this hour. God is watching. And he's charging us. He's charging us as a people. Huh? To do what everybody else don't want to do. Amen. To stand when everybody else don't want us. It's not a passport to sin, to do what we want to do. Grace is meant for me to grow. Amen. Grace is meant for me to grow in character. Hallelujah. Let me say, Romans 1 and 21, and they knew God, but they didn't honor him as God. They knew him. They didn't thank him. Their thinking became worthless. Their foolish heart became dark. Paul said, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning? That grace may uh -huh. increase. Not so. By no means. In other words, cut that short. We are those who have died. Hallelujah. <laughs> we are those who have died. How can we live any longer, the Bible says? Think about it. How can we live any longer in sin when we have died to the sin? How can we just wallow as a pig when we've been clean from the slop? How can we say that we're going to bring fire? You're bringing water. It don't make sense. Now, because some people like to try to manipulate it, you know. You can't manipulate grace. But I will tell you what grace is. Write this down. Grace is a teacher. See, that's why people don't talk about grace as a spirit prophet is. You got to catch this. Grace is the same way flowing in the same vein as love. My God, my God. It's a spirit. My God, my God. It's a spirit. Like the Holy Spirit, it guides us, talks to us, Grace does the same. Grace begins to teach us. Look what it says. God's saving grace has appeared to all people. Watch this. It teaches us to say no to godless ways 
and sinful longings. Did you catch that? We must control ourselves. Amen. We must do what is right. We must lead godly lives in today's world. That's what grace does. It teaches us how to, how to control ourselves. It teaches us to say no to godlessness. Now, we're talking scripture now because this is refuting this free grace message. This is scripture, right? This old ballerina grace message. Well, you just get in and drop it like it's hot, it's all good. I, I need to have this permeated through your spirit so you can understand the difference, right? Grace is a teacher. Somebody say a teacher. teacher. Gr God's grace and mercies are to influence our character and the conduct of believers. It's here to cause us to learn his grace. Remember, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, how the law begins to show us our evil ways. The law. It was, it was here to show us, look how dirty you are. Look how filthy you are. Look at yourself. Compare, compare to a holy God. You know how self-righteous we are? We believe somebody owes us something, and the truth of the matter is, ain't nobody owes us nothing. Nobody is supposed to just give you something because of you are who you are. That is a lie. And it's the very reason why people don't bow down to the king of kings. That's the very reason. That pride is the very reason why they don't get to their knees and get low. Because they feel as though God, you owe me. Where is mine at? And God already gave it to you. Gave it to you through his son. He gave you the grace. He gave you an option. You can die. Or you can grow in grace. You can grow in character. You can say no to evil. Or you can say yes to it. It is your choice. What are you going to do? That is what grace is meant for. Grace is meant for our weaknesses. Because he understands that we are feeble. Think about it. Your mind, our minds can't stop thinking about evil. We wake up thinking about evil. We come about the dream thinking about evil at times. We can be in a good function, everything is going well, evil will pop up in your mind. That's because our flesh, Holy Spirit help me, our flesh is no good. Think about it. Who is talking about the afterlife? Who is like really concerned about after this life? My man gave an illustration. I posted it on Facebook. How he had this long rope in basically the life that we live in is from this part to this part. Born, middle age, ending. We're trying to save up so we can live good right here. Oh boy, it's going to be all right. We're trying to save up a few, few dollars so we can ride it all the way through here. Not thinking about and it goes on and on eternity. Not sitting in the, sitting down long enough to make a real conscious decision. Life is like a vapor. To get the real, to get the principles that's needed. That's needed. For us to make it into this afterlife. This place of eternal bliss, happiness, joy. Because the truth of the matter is, it's going to be one way or another. 
And God said, I'm gracing you now. I'm gracing you so you can choose to operate and function in godly character. Romans 6, 14 says, sin will not be your master. <laughs> the law does not rule you. God's grace has set you free. Look what it says. You make fun of God's grace. Pay attention. You make fun of God's great kindness and favor. Do you make fun of God when he is patient with you? Do you make fun of God when he is patient with you? Do, don't you realize that God's kindness is meant to turn you away from your sins? It's meant to evolve us. It's meant to cause us to realize, hold on. Something is not right with me. You know what? There are people can that they, they, they don't even say something is wrong with them, brother B. Can't even attest to it. They got it all together, but they caused the, the most wreckage. Isn't that interesting? <coughs> Wasn't fighting, going to jail, all kind of stuff, calling the police, bringing bottles. And you got it, to, you got it together. This cause is for us to turn. Hear me. He's patient with us so we can I want you to realize where you're at in your life. What efforts have you made with God's grace to turn? Have you made fun of God lately? Have you? The Bible says that you are slave to whatever you serve. It is a choice. And I don't care what everybody else talk about and how they say it, but this is the truth of the matter. If you operate in sin, you are serving sin. Whatever you operate in, that is your master. So if you are a lesbian and you are continuing in that path, that is your master. If you like to cuss, I don't care how much time you go to church and you continue in that path, that is your master. That is who you are following. If you are continuing in your lustful ways and you continue, I don't care what you say at the end of the day. When you get to the end of this road here, <clears throat> grace was meant to cause us to realize I am lustful. I cannot do it on my own. Amen. I need help. And grace will be with you as you search for the answer. Amen. He said, search for me. He says, seek, knock, ask. He didn't say, throw a wish in the sky, you know, like most folks do. Lord, I wish you'd come help me. But the interesting thing about it is everybody want to be thug until they get behind bars. If you can hear all the prayers that go on behind jail, that's interesting. 
I told you it's a fight against the flesh. The flesh will never let up. Grace is there so we can oppose the flesh. So you can get so you can become knowledgeable enough to make a conscious decision to turn. And it's all right if you mess up. Bible says a just man what? Fall at seven times. But what does he do? Get it back up. Not wallowing it. Well, I done did it. I might as well go all the way with it now. No. No, you can be at the house. Got Barry White on. Or whatever you like, Chris Brown. In the background, you done made it all the way over there. Y'all in the bed. It's about to go down. And the Holy Spirit says, Don't do it. Don't do it. You don't want no problem. Look what he said. <laughs> take this away from me, Lord. No, I will not take it away from you because my grace is made perfect in your weakness. That moment that you're in, you're reminded of how weak the flesh really is. That moment when you're fussing and you find yourself in that place, that peak, it's not for you to continue on since you started it. I might as well finish it. No, no, no. I know the Holy Spirit told you. All right, now. He said, and I will give grace to the humble. See, when you find yourself at that place, you humble yourself. And the grace comes to get you out of that situation. He said, I will give you a way of escape. When the enemy comes, I will give you a way. Look what he said. I will give you. I, I, not you, I. Because the enemy will never give you a way of escape that will bring you into complete freedom. It's always bondage. Always think about your vices, whatever your vice may be. I don't have a vice that did not get me in trouble. I don't have one vice that brought me to a promised land, that brought me to just some poetic peace where I can just relax in the sun. Think about your vices. The interesting thing that I want to tell you today about this whole flesh thing the servant thing. People don't talk about it. But whatever your vice is, that's your vice. You need to woman up. That's what you deal with for the rest of your life. Ha, if that's what caused you to fall before, best believe, buddy, he's going to come again. The Bible says, and when he leaves... And he finds the place empty. He will bring seven back. Am I talking scripture? See, I, I need you to understand these principles, these dynamics in the spirit. Because we've got to move from, let me just get this together so I get this together. We've got to move from this place to move into this place. What, what are you showing me, Father? What is it that you want me to do? How do you want me to accomplish this? So when you transition, you are already spirit. It's no problem because you've been moving in spirit your whole life. It helps you for service as well. Now serve the good news because God gave his grace. His power is at work in me. I am by far the least important of all God's people. This is Paul talking. But he gave me the grace to preach to the nine Jews about the wonderful riches that Christ gives, Ephesians 3, 7 through 8. Listen to that. He said, I was the least. I read somewhere today, well, in the Old Testament, well, God, he chose Israel. Not because they were the greatest. Not because of something that they did. Because Israel was the least of everyone. Look who God chooses. He chooses a person that nobody would believe would ever become anything. 
I'm talking to somebody in this house this morning because I know some of you have been through some situations in your life and some of you are probably still feeling as if the world is against you. Well, glory be to God, partner. Welcome to the family. The truth of the matter is that's who God chooses. He said, I became poor that you may become rich. He went to the worst, the impoverished place ever, Bethlehem, in a manger, and showed us how he would cause wealth to come to him. They went searching for him. Your gifts will make room for you. He causes the wise to be confounded. Because of God's grace, I am what I am. And his grace was not, watch this, wasted on me. Wow, you mean to tell me grace can be wasted? Did you pick that up? Say that again. Paul talking. He said, I'm the least of these, in another one of those verses, I'm the least of them. And I'm only moving by God's grace. Put the pieces together. Listen for yourself what the Bible is saying. This is word. Skip what everybody else is talking about. Listen to the word. Look what it says. But because of God's grace, I am what I am. Nobody becomes nothing in life without the grace of God. Amen. Nothing. We can do nothing without his grace. And it takes a great humility to say, I am nothing without you, Father. I am nothing without you, Father. I am nothing without you, Father. And that's the posture that we should have when we wake up in the morning. I am nothing without you. But thanks be to God that you sent Jesus. Because now I am more than a conqueror by your grace. Be restored in this house. The world teaches you one way. Learn it the other way. The word of God's way. And operate in the grace that will cause your character to change. To become who you are initially was from the foundation of creation. Become somebody in Christ. And his grace was not wasted on me. No, I have worked harder than all of the apostles. But watch this. But I did not do the work. God's grace was with me. He said. Now you see why this grace message has been switched up. Not by works. You're mixing up stuff, bro. You're mixing up stuff. You're mixing up that law. Because the law, you did have to work. You had to get down, cut things, put it on the altar, do all of that, right? That was the law. Right? Now, Jesus, there was nothing that we could have done to deserve to receive. The gift, it was a gift given to us by Jesus, the grace, the grace to live. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Somebody should be, the grace to breathe, the grace to do what God has called you to do, the grace to say no to my past. Jesus, the grace to move forward with my life. The grace to say no to feeling bad today because I feel good in Christ. Uh I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth because it's not my joy. It is his joy. God doesn't look at me. He look at Jesus. I'm just becoming who I'm supposed to be. 
That is an empowerment. Yes. To understand and know that you are powerful in Christ. There is a power in that. Now you're able to do miracles. Because you understand it's not through you. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit. There is a spirit that's on the inside of us. That's gracing us to do remarkable things. He said, I worked, but I didn't work. It was by grace. In other words, everything that I did, he gave me the ability. I couldn't do it on my own. You wake up, put the key in ignition, vroom, 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 by his grace. I'm eating this jelly donut <laughs> by his grace. Because guess what? There was somebody in Africa who is not eating. Amen. But you are. There was somebody who got a messed up marriage somewhere. But God is fixing yours by his grace. And even if it seemed like it's messed up, you watch how God fix it by his grace. Come on now. You don't have a man? That is wonderful. Everything as unto the Lord. But watch he bring your husband by his grace. He will make you the appropriate wife by his grace. Early morning prayers, fasting, getting ready to accomplish things in life by his grace. Amen. Grace is meant to build our character. Amen. And they said, I don't know how he's speaking with such authority in his voice because he knew who he was. He knew that I'm a man, but I got grace that's on the inside of me. God has graced me for this. This is what he sent me here for. And if I got opposition, it's okay because all things work together. Yes, hallelujah. And I know sometimes it's going to hurt me, but it works together for my good. Hallelujah. No matter what happens and how it happens. All I gotta do is seek him. Said that we are we're able to serve Jesus Christ by grace. I'm almost finished. People don't even understand that principle, elder. I'll come in. Oh, lift up my hands. It's time to worship. Mm -hmm. oh, hallelujah. <laughs> you know, fare, farewell Christians, you know, they just come in and farewell. I can go down the line. I could, I could really step on something right now, but I'm not. Well, look what Say it says. Why are you scared? The God's people? grace. Watch. God's gift of grace came in many forms. Each of you have received a gift in order to serve others. You should use it faithfully. 1 Peter 4 and 10. But he said unto me, my grace is all you need. My power is strongest when you are weak. So you cannot say that I can't worship God. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you don't feel like worshiping today. So you can know it's not by your power. I ain't going to fake. Good. I don't want you to fake. What I want you to do is step in the spirit. No, you're not talking to me up in this house. It's getting quiet. What I want you to do is step in the spirit and go by his grace. Accept his grace by faith. I don't feel like it, but Lord, this is what you want me to do. I worship you anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can go on and on. But let me just close this with this. Let me close. 30 more minutes. Like that for me, please. Let me explain the ultimate reason for grace right now, this morning. Grace gives us an opportunity. 
come back to God's original plan. Say it again. Grace, grace, grace. Gives, us an opportunity gives us an opportunity to come back to, come back to, God's, original plan. to God's original plan. God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Here's the key. Male and female, he created them in the image. That's Genesis 1 and 27. Don't miss this. The God of this age binded the minds of unbelievers. The God of this age. How many people don't believe in Jesus already? Think about it. They done took Christmas out of Christmas. You can't say Merry Christmas, no Merry Xmas. Happy Holidays. No, Merry Christmas. Hello. That's what I'm going to say. Merry Christmas. You can't say God. I'm saying God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. I am bringing Jesus back. You're not going to take Jesus out of my mouth. Because he graced me to do it. I'm not walking in fear. Well, I got to shut my mouth because of what everybody else is saying. No, I'm opening up my mouth. I'm not going to become a victim of society and turn away from the cross to make you feel good. Amen. You need to know about the cross. You need to understand the grace that God has given us in the ability because you think that you got in that position by yourself, but you didn't. Amen. I want to ask the question, who are you serving and where are you going to be at the end of this life? What are you preparing for? It binds the minds of the unbelievers. So they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ. Watch this. Who is the image of God? 2 <laughs> Corinthians 4 and 4. Christ, watch this. Christ who is the what? Image of God. Again, Christ, 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 Christ who, is who is the image, the image of, of God. God. What happened in the garden? He fell, he fell and he lost something. Yep. He lost the the image. image. It was no longer face to face. Yep. Christ came, it says he come in the image of God. And it says somewhere in the scripture that he sent Christ so that he can form a new creature, mm. new creation. What is, what is he saying? He's saying, I've sent Christ so that now you can come to the throne boldly Amen. in a time of need. Final scripture. Those who God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son so that he might be the firstborn among many brethren and sisters. As image bearers, we ought to reflect the father that he may be glorified in all that we do. Say it again. As image bearers, as image bearers, we are to reflect, we are to reflect the image of God, the image of God that he may be glorified. That he may be glorified. Something we lost. God allowed all of those years, thousands of years to pass. 4,000 years from Adam to Jesus. I want you to understand something here because we only get 100 max. You might get 115. Most of the time, men, they 75. 
You might get 75 years and then you carry on home. Some of the women make it to 80, 85. 4,000 years, prophetess, from Adam to Jesus. I'm going to let y'all try it your way. You want to do it? Let's see how you're going to do it. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. And there was only a short few number of people who really got in contact with God. Elijah. Moses. By his choice, though. Think about it. He keep proving himself. Who is the real God? Okay? Tell your God to send his fire down. Burn his up. And nothing happened. Nothing happened. Now, this is documented. This ain't no fairy tale. Brother B, this is documented. Even the Muslims know that this really happened. So we got somebody who's not a part of our religion or what you would call relationship with God, but they know that that was a fact. That was a fact. Elijah called down fire from heaven. That happened. That is written. Even the Muslims would say that Jesus was the greatest prophet. Now, how stupid? Let me not even go on that right now. Because that, that should have told it all right there. Now, if he greater than Muhammad, now you should one plus one is two. Even their script say that Jesus was the greatest prophet. Now something don't add up right there. Okay? We're not going to get on to that apologetics right now. What I want you to focus on is thinking about for 4,000 years, man tried to do it their way. They even tried to build a tower. <laughs> Try to lift up their own. They've they, been doing this. This ain't nothing new. Edify their own name. We watch, we watch, you know, you know, when we was coming, when I was coming up, you know, Lil Wayne and Bailey and, you know, people of that standard, they were balling, put it on TV. You would want to do the same. You would, you would want to do the same. When Tilly was living, most of them dudes wanted to be like Tilly. You see where he ended up at. Mm. Trying to build a name for themselves. So Jesus came. Opened the door for grace. He embodied grace. In other words, he carried it with him and he released it. So that we can be new creations creatures. Now here's the key. This is what you need to get. We are considered to be in the image of God. Now, everybody have weaknesses. Don't miss me on this. Everybody have issues. What God gets glory on it is when we humble ourselves and in our humbling, watch this, don't miss this, because this way humans get on. In our humbling, in our surrender to his word, to his ways, in our, in the midst of the storm, Elder Raymond, in the midst of me carrying on with my foolishness. And I'm reminded of this is not the character of God. And I accept the grace by humbling myself. That's what happens. You did, my friend, becomes a reflection of God. At that very moment, you humble yourself and you accept what his words say. Listen to me, because this is a mystery for some folk. You then, my friend, become a reflection, an image of what God looks like.
looks like. People always say, well, sometimes you're the most Bible that person ever is going to see. And it's true. The way that you live reflects God. And so to take an altar grace message and do what you want to do with it is to waste grace. Because God does not look like the devil. So next time you want to hear somebody say, once saved, always saved, you think about that. Once, next time somebody want to keep this ultra grace message without accountability, think about that. Paul said, I work the hardest, but it's not my work. I didn't work, it was the grace. Now, you have a charge as an image bearer to live your life to live your lives up to the standards in the closer you become and the more obedient you become the more you will reflect his image Think about that. I told you. Look up. God is always looking. I told you that for a reason. We are his temple. What does God do when you sanct when when you when you take a temple, you cleanse it out, he sanctifies it. He comes down and he steps in it. And the smoke filled the room where the priest had to leave. In other words, that represents flesh have to leave. And they say, don't you know that your bodies are the temple of God? And when you operate the way that God wants you to operate, his spirit fills your temple. And other people are looking and saying, wow. Look at the glory of God. Look at the glory of God. That brings to another point. God needs you to build kingdom. That's what his grace is for. It's not only to save you, but it's to build your image, his image. So he grace you. I'll give you this. I ain't saying it's going to be easy, but my grace is sufficient, and it's made perfect in weakness because it's going to reveal your weakness, and when you humble yourself and you cry out, Lord, I need this contract, I can't do it by myself, this grace comes in, you're my son, you've been faithful, come on. He sends the spirit of his son into our heart. The grace is for the hard times. When we slip and we humble ourselves and say, you know what? I messed up. Just man fall it and get it back up. The, the object is not to continue to fall. The object is to grow in character. And in statue. That's what your grace is for. You cannot do nothing in this world without it. And to do it without him is to idolize yourself. And you now, my friend, have become a God. And you know what God does with those other gods? He breaks them. Your business, your schooling, everything that you are, you are challenged to do, God has graced you to do it. All of the excuses, all of the 
what you can't do, you're right, you can't do it. But by his grace, it will be done. His grace. You are conquerors through the spirit. His grace. You are not less than. I don't care what they told you in the past. You're not less than. And so as you build everything that you do, what is your call? I'm going to sit right now. Because that don't look like heaven. That doesn't reflect heaven. I haven't watched it in a while. I'm telling you, just being honest with you. I got to get out of scene because I'm reflecting God. Your conversations. And your conversations with you and G talking up like that. Did y'all have conversations like the way that you be talking with whoever you talking to? No, no. No, no. No, no, no. No, no. And so now you wonder why your prayers are hindered. Because remember, any other idol before him, it have to be broken. And so your conversation have to be broken first before he can bless you. He don't want you to think. You get where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. I want y'all to have this deep rooted in your spirit now. This is good foundation. This is good, good, solid foundation as it relates to growing in Christ. Amen. You can grow the kingdom. Listen to me. You can grow this kingdom by his grace. Amen. By his grace alone. You can't even love right, minister. Amen. 